We're convened this morning for the uh, equalization meeting. Um, we'll run the room and everybody identify themselves so that we know who's here. Uh, start with me. I'm Chris Olson, Chairman. I'm Bob Seaver, Board Member. Shelley Reed, County Clerk. Brian Mitchell, DA's Office. Jeff Mills, Consultant, Sandra. Ben Hunley with Task. Jerry Wisdom with Task. Renata Benson, the Assessor. Yeah, Shirley Member. Okay. Member. Thank you, sir. ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, we have a quorum here. Bob? Yes. Here we go. Yes. Yeah. All of our equalization people are here, so we're able to conduct business then. And have you had a chance to look the minutes over of the last meeting uh, that we had on June 8th? Yes. Yeah.
on page three, and you'll see the one, uh, this is the one uh, from Chesapeake is actually uh, uh, put star. They be taken water from Chesapeake, so that's the one saltwater disposal well behind. So I'm going to break that out so you can see how much is actually going there. The quantity and then actual amount. Cost. And then page four and five are, are just what I was referring to. Um, mostly on page five, you can just you, I put it in kind of brackets there. Uh, but the judge ruled that saltwater disposal wells are necessary for petroleum production, therefore not taxable as property. But he also then held a certain more than one lease on which a specific producing well is located would be partly taxable, whatever that means. So something becomes partly taxable if it serves more than one production well. So how we get to that percentage, is, um, obviously open to listen to, but it's it, everyone's a little bit different on that. But the way I got to it is the well that is actually taking in third party, the source well is taking in third party, because there's an income stream there, that should be taxable. But if it's just serving Sandridge and all of their off product, that to me would be non-taxable and therefore covered in the gross production tax. That's, that's pretty much what we're going for today. So again, it's not fair market value, it's just taxable. Has there been a ruling, this ruling this judge was 40 years ago, has there been a ruling since then? I'm not aware of anything that's updated as far as now that we have so much more horizontal, more productive water going in, I'm not aware of that. And walk me through your math, uh, how you come up with the 15 wells into the, the, the 197 being pumped into the 15. Sure, so that, that would be a different percentage if, if you were to look at it as in, you know, if you're looking at one for one, only being, uh, you know, exempt. So I, I took it as we have 15 wells, but one of those wells is actually taking in third party water. So one of 15 is basically 7%. So. Um, or get 7%. So I basically said that that portion is excluded um, or therefore taxable. So the amount that feeds Sandridge only, in my opinion, should be exempt. But if it takes in third party, that should be taxable. So that's how I got it. The one well that's taking in third party. Who uh, who owns the disposal well and how, how do you uh, track the ownership of the water going into it? How do you charge for that, mm -hmm. and, and who reaps the benefit from the uh, uh, function of the disposal? Sure. In, in most cases, it's 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 primarily Sandridge. We have about I think 15 different uh, disposal wells over the state, various counties that will take in third party, and I'll, I'll give you that information for any other county. But for this particular county, we only have one disposal well that takes in any third party, and that's identified on page three with Chesapeake. But as far as the amount that's paid in, and I mean, I'm not sure about, it says it specifically up here, the amount of money that they collected for that. But it's gotta be different, you know, per, per county. So sometimes they'll, they'll truck that in and they'll feed it down the disposal well. But in most cases, and almost primarily all, 95, 96% of it is all sand rich water. Okay, the, the well that disposes in to that, uh, if it has non-operated people in it, do they pay a portion of the disposal to Sand Ridge? Uh, how, how do you, how do you uh, uh, justify paying those people? You understand what I'm saying? No, I'm sorry, Dallas. Okay, if I'm a non-operator in one of your wells and is disposing into your saltwater disposal, Yes, Are you charging me for that? Yes, the one here on, on Chesapeake. Yes. No, I mean the non-operated people inside the Chesapeake. Yeah. Is what you're talking are, about. are you charging them for that? Well, the working interest is Sandridge. No. No. I'm sorry. No. no. I'm not following. No. What do you, what do you say? If I may, Chris? Right, please. I'm sorry. Uh, the working, in, in each operating well, we have different working interest owners. Sure, sure. Who is the same working interest owners in the operating well own the saltwater disposal well? Um, I, I know on the Sanders portion, yes. I'm not sure on that. I, 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 yeah, the, well, sure. the, the answer is no. Okay, Chris. Because there's more. Sandridge keeps the saltwater disposals in a separate, separate company as an income producing. That, that, was my, that was where I was going. Right. They keep We're, this in a separate company, so if we all invested in wells, we're paying sand rates to dispose of water off of another lease. So it's you talking royalties? No, I'm talking about working work, interest. Right. Yes, I'm sure that there's fraction ownership, mm -hmm. of course. And yeah, the working interest, interest owners are paying right. a disposal fee to Sandridge in a different company. They don't allow us as working interest 
to it, get it involved in that portion of that. So it's basically a commercial disposal well at that point, in my opinion. For the non-operator. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I know that these are all permitted as non the, they are permitted yeah. initially. They did yeah. come out as right. permitted as commercial wells. Then they changed the permit application. Right, it's not commercial. Right. Okay, that, that's where I was headed. Okay, okay Jerry, uh, what's your response here? Okay. Uh, Renetta. <clears throat> Renetta? Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure that <laughs> This case is. This is the Supreme Court decision on the Cumberland operating on this issue. I don't know if that's an exact citation that you made. Is it, Jeff? I don't know. This is the one that we supplied uh, with uh, with them. So this had a this had an individual. So the way this works is a a lease is 640 acres typically uh, of an oil and gas operating well. So if we have a particular operating well in that 640 acre lease and then we have a disposal well to dispose of water from that lease that is claimed exempt because it's taking water from the same lease uh, and typically what happens in, in the older days like jeff was talking about in the older days that was the operator and we're all the working interest owners own the same percentage well in that saltwater disposal well. What has happened, this is a new industry or a new sideline business, if you will, or however you want to call it, that are, is taking water. And Sand Ridge is the operator. They, they've spun these kind of, this particular group off and is, is charging the, uh, per barrel a day, probably around 55 cents typically. It could be more, it could be less. Uh, I guess we can look at his, this is the first time that I had seen in his exhibit on Sandrit, on um, Chesapeake, on how much they're charging. Uh, so it's, I guess, connecting, is this 7,097 barrels at 3,900? Is that what that is in June? Yes. Okay, so 3,903 divided by 7,097. 55 cents, I'm pretty good, I guess, without <laughs> looking at it. So the average market is around 55 cents per barrel. So this particular well is, is drawing an income from that uh, property, so it's an income producing property, and they're taking water from the, from the Chesapeake well itself. But this Cumberland, what, you know, he talked, Jeff talked about it, he said he didn't really know how they did the allocation. Well, the court decided an allocation too, it's a pro rata share. So if this operator, in this particular case, this Cumberland operating, so we had one well and one 640 section and a saltwater disposal. So all of the water that came from the well inside the same lease is exempt. They, they took water in from another location, from another lease across the road. So let's just say that 50 barrels of water came from the other lease, 50 barrels of water came from the other lease, what you do is you determine the fair market value of the disposal well and then you tax 50% of it because 50% of the water comes from the other. This is the first year that Mr. Mills and his group of merit advisors has done this. We have done this in the past for Sand Ridge and they gave us the volumes of water and even in the valuation that we did this year, Jeff, we took in the, the amount of water and gave a valuation for that. So we've already allowed for that, correct? In the allocation method, I'm not sure. If I haven't seen okay. The in the allocation method, we had the barrels of water that came. On some instances, let me just because uh, I don't have the detail here, but on the Coppet saltwater, 72% of it was taxable. On the Jessica, 84% was taxable. Uh, on the hang on a second. The CB, 94%, the Mandy Joe, 92%, uh, but it's all different ones. So from the basis of the 100% of value, 92% of that water came off, so that's how it's been taxed. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is Sand Ridge's new, new approach to this or if this is just Merrick's 
approach to this. They're representing them, but Sandridge in the past hasn't done that. And given the fact that, I guess it's kind of concerning, I mean, I think Jeff alluded to it, you know, giving the, uh, uh, because of the times it changed and getting another one agreed to because of all the uh, earthquakes that we've had up in this part of the world, with these saltwater disposal wells, you know, I think Sand Ridge wants to be a you know a good corporate citizen, but yet at the same time now they're saying that it's all exempt and we shouldn't even tax it. I think it's a little alarming, you know, to me. So I don't I don't know if that's your opinion, Jeff, or if that's Sand Ridge's opinion. This is the next step before they go to court. Uh, but I couldn't, you know, we we came to an impasse. They're just saying that they're you know exempt, and it's clear that the, the Constitution or the Supreme Court's already ruled on. So, but I just, I just find it a little troubling that we're going to have earthquakes that could destroy our school buildings and then we're not going to get any tax revenue, you know, from the saltwater disposals that's there. Um, so, but given that and given that we've already had this case in the Supreme Court, given the history that we've had with Sand Ridge, uh, I would ask you to uphold our value. I think, Jeff, you got 21 506 147. I got 21 498 339. We're close on those numbers, but in, this is my evaluation by school district for each one of these that we uh, agreed to. We had some adjustments that we need to have early on, but we would recommend that you would adopt these values at 21,498,339 as the fair cash value based upon this. And, and again, this is a completely different scenario it's not paying part of gross production taxes uh, it has to do with exactly with what you said Chris is the owners as a business entity uh, this is another complete business that they're holding separately than they are from us uh, working interest owners that, that's my concern if, if this is a profit-making organization to dispose water and are you drawing your profits from non-operators in multiple wells um, that's that's my question uh, because they're they're actually paying a premium to dispose their water and that's not uh, so, something that uh, you know under the uh, accounting procedure of each well is that or, or is that under gross production taxes uh, exempt from that or well, I think we'd be looking at it in a multi-faceted here because nobody's in the business, Sanders isn't in the business of taking on everyone else's water. It, it, yeah. That is a byproduct. And but if that well, that you're, uh, these multiple wells, if those wells have different owners, mm -hmm. and some of them are non-operated, they're not owned by Ch uh, Sand Ridge per se, you're charging those people and making a profit off from them. That's my point. Well, yes, yeah. the working operator is, is Sand Ridge. Yeah, so you I have understand. fractional working but, uh, interests that are a lot of times given in, in whenever you make these transactions when you make these transactions. So they're they're not I mean we're we're talking very small amounts. It is an amount of course and that's something we can look into. Nobody's in the business of it. If not, the water would sit there and someone would truck it out somewhere. That's not how it happens. They're not in the business of taking in saltwater disposal. The reason why we don't have or the reason why there's we're not building new you know, disposal wells. Is one, it's not economical. Two, it's not environmental friendly. I think Sanders is pretty aware of that. We're not trying to take school books yeah. out of school kids. Right. I, I don't like using that analogy because at the end of the day, we're here to talk about value. School kids and school books, that should not even be discussed in this, this setting. We're talking about value and taxability, right? If anything, Sandridge has paid quite a bit here in taxes, and, and we should thank them, actually, for doing business here. I don't want to get into that. Let's talk about that. Value, I'm comfortable with that. As far as fair market, I don't see where the percentage breakout is. You mentioned multiple percentages and different ones as far as taxable. I haven't seen that, I just haven't seen it. You said 73% for this one, 93% for that. Where, I haven't seen a tax injury. I just haven't you, seen it. You, you got a detail sheet. And it shows the percentage Absolutely. of each one. Absolutely. Going, but how does that affect fair market value? You have the tax no, that's the tax. Well, the twenty-eight percent of the seventy-two percent, twenty-eight percent is exempt. Okay, so that shows on a different column as taxable yes. versus the fair market. It shows okay. as an adjustment factor in there. So seventy-two percent is taxable, twenty-eight percent is not. Okay. 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 I just I that's just yeah. If you look at that adjustment factor over there, okay, that's where it's at. Okay. It's and an James account. in the past has given you information for the the, the percentage and allocation. Absolutely. We he 
you know, you know this, we're, we're new to this, we haven't seen everything, all of his notes, you know, we're trying to, to piece it together. So if he has something in the past that you, you, you know, you've worked with, we can probably find it, but they've had 100, basically everybody is, is turned over except for the tax director there. Well, well, on that, so. Jeff, I find it odd that you was able for this one lease to come up with the yeah, numbers. Why we don't track that? We don't we don't track it by other working. We we track who we who we brought in. That's the only well. That is the only well that has value as far as uh, water coming in. But they keep track of the volumes of water that comes from each well. Of course they do. But that is all third party. But it even but what my point is is they do track it. They track you just didn't party. have it. I, I have what yeah, I have with the game. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Which is third so, party. And, and, and you know, on another point, point that, that he's made, I'm going to talk about school books and school children. I was talking about school buildings and earthquakes. That's what I was talk, talking about. Uh, and, and give the case. So I, but I really don't know if this is Sandridge's grind, if you will, or if this is your grind uh, and merit advisors. Yeah, it's more that we're, we're looking at it as based on other providers, other operators, we seem to be the one that, that's getting taxed on this more. Okay, so my, my point was the fact that Sandridge is a good operator, they are in this business, and we certainly thank them for being here. But again, I don't know if this is Sandridge's or if this is Merritt Advisors, like, you know, advising it, you know, taking board because they are speaking for Sandridge, and that was clearly all I'm saying. Yeah. Your opinion, because yeah. apparently when it was Sandridge at the corporate level, they were okay, mm -hmm. but now that it's at Merritt Advisors, it's not okay. Right. And once you go through a bankruptcy issue, you start trying to find all the money where things you might have just let go in the past, you kind of scrutinize now because when you're down 50% of all your employees, you do want to make sure you are a good business, uh, you know, a business entity in each of these counties, and we want to employ people. But at the same time, yeah, we definitely want to try to save tax dollars that normally we might have overlooked. Uh, Chris, what we might do here is there's another way to approach this, you know, evaluation issues. We could ask him to go back for every one of these wells and get these volumes and check the, the allocations method that we did. Uh, and we could find out how much they were charging those other operators as of the lease, and we'd have, you know, 197 of these, and in, in which wells they went into the water and we could make sure my allocation was proper but this is the this is the first time that you've shown yes, me yes. this right Absolutely. would so, you be opposed to that yes, sir. Needs to do yes, sir. so if he would just give us all of the volumes of water that came from the other leases and which wells they went into and the amounts they charged then we can make sure our percentages were, were correct on as far as uh, exempt and tax my concern is if it is actually Sand Ridge owned interest, mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem with that. But if there is a non-operated owned interest in those wells and he is being charged uh, an additional profit. So what we have to have, we have to have the working interest owner break down uh, the division order for yes. each one of the wells to determine that. Exactly. The reason why I'm saying this is I see your invoices. Yes. And um, you just have to be a working interest. I have to be a working interest. And you, <laughs> you, you hang me with a, a tight rope on everyone, and I know. So you have to be a working interest holder. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yes. And okay. so Mr. I kind of know. So we know what's going on. No, know where the profit center is. You guys are making money on me. Yeah, I'm, I would say you have a vested interest in this case that you're hearing. <laughs> so, you know, that's just my question. If you're making money on the non-operated party mm -hmm. disposing this wells, then I think that would be taxable without question. Yeah, I, I'd have to look at that percentage and, and okay. get all that happy to gather. But, um, so my suggestion turn. to you guys would be let's let them gather more information and come back to us uh, yeah. with mm -hmm. more do we need a motion for that or just have it? Yeah, we probably need a, a motion for. So we'll make a motion that the gentleman, Jess, Jeff, Jeff sorry, yes, will return at whatever time and bring the documents we've just mentioned that we need to take a look at. So to expedite this, if Jeff could just supply me with the information, me and Jeff can work together on getting that if that's okay with Jeff. I mean, we've done this before, so okay. he'll provide the information. Once we get that, we can set another date or something, or it may just be that we 
come to a conclusion and agree on that or disagree on that or whatever it might be to get the proper allocation, but then you can okay. set another date. Do we have another date set for the board or? Um, 10 days after today would be the seventh. But I mean, do you have another one? No. Okay, but we could go ahead and do another, because it's gonna take a, a little bit of time, yeah. probably 10 days or so for him to get that, and then it's gonna take me a few days to analyze it. If we could bring it in Excel, it'd be better. Sure. So, but you know, I'm gonna just say let's just postpone it till you know uh, late July or something. Okay. Uh, give you guys time. To give us time out. to work through that. Okay. That sounds good to me. Do That's the motion then. Yeah. Motion then to uh, delay the decision on this till we get more information. And once I get the information, I will report to Shelly yeah. that we've got the information and then she can set a date. That's good with Jeff. That's fine. Okay. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for coming. That's good. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay, next one we have is Paul 
Mid con of things. What uh, the circumstances here? They um, sent an affidavit. Okay, we've got that. If you say page. Okay, everybody had a chance to come. <coughs> Look their information. Oh, Give me just a little bit. Okay. Alfalfa County is a major county here. Okay, what's the 901 um, P filing? Is that what we're looking at here on the next to the last page? No, it's not. Uh, that's what I was looking up to. This is the first time that I've seen this. The 901 P I pulled up is their rendition that they reported to the assessor initially. Uh, I, I've got it on my laptop here. I'm, I'm going through there in one school district who reported 1,114,775 for the assets. And I'm just going up through here. And another school district, he reported 3,946,890. And for the other school district, Two million four seven zero five seventy for a total of five million five thirty two two thirty five. So his sworn affidavit is totally incorrect. Uh, from that basis, I don't know that we can accept it uh, as being true and correct. Uh, I guess I would refer to this might be a call for the for the DA on that point there too. I mean he quoted that, but I mean. It's, Still at the end, I mean, I'm just showing the, the numbers here, but let's just go a little bit further, you know, you know, on that instance too. But he reported five million five fifty three two twenty three, which still irrelevant from the three million nine. It just appears to me that he's lowered the numbers more <laughs> for the board. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen this happen before. That the closer they get to court, the lower the numbers get. Um, so I'm unaware of that. But our market value is 16 million 507 252. Uh, here is our information. Kind of summary of the assets. This little history of this uh, for the board is this was originally the old uh, Continental Resources or Highland Partners, Eagle Chief down here in the southeastern part of the county, you know, facility. Uh, in 2012, Cabello Energy acquired this from Eagle Chief, and he said in this right here uh, that Tall Oaks acquired it from Eagle Chief. Well, last year it was under Cabello's name, so that's even incorrect as far as a matter of record. Uh, I haven't seen this purchase price allocation or this that he's presented today. It appears like it's sort of an IRS Form 85 you know, 94 asset that we typically ask for. Uh, it looks like that the, the in-service date, looks like they part they bought part of it, 7-1 uh, of 16, and then some others, 12-1, so maybe it was a couple of different, you know, sales. Uh, again, this wasn't provided to the county Okay, he, uh, on the back, this is even different. On the back, he says that he rendered 7532235 Does everybody see that now? Woods County. For Woods yeah. County, that contradicts his 3240037 and definitely contradicts the rendition that I just looked at. So, we got I think numbers. the 3240, he's referring to the county above, Major. Oh, okay, I see that now. So this is the wrong affidavit for the wrong county. <laughs> One fell swoop with a few typos. Uh, yeah, so, so anyway, I think it was the judge and I brought that out of the window there on, on the sworn affidavits. <laughs> Good catch, is it Joe, isn't it, Bob? It's Bob, Bob. Okay. Okay. Good, Good catch, Bob. Bob. I mean, you're going to read everything? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why he took the extra time and I didn't. No. Oh, no. <laughs> so, in any event, let me just brief you on this a little bit. Is you know, this is a pipeline system, and, and they've added some other stuff. Tall Oaks had some other, 
you know, assets. Uh, that plant's been down there for, for several years, and they've done some upgrades and stuff to it. But I haven't seen this sale uh, for that. It's the first one, the first time that I've seen this. I did a little bit of, of uh, looking up, but I think that this has to do with another allocation of reserves with the company too as well. So they may have allocated more to the reserve value than they did for the pipeline. I don't know. We just have to look at the complete agreement they have. But it'd be my recommendation, seeing how we valued this property the same that we did all the other pipelines in the county as far as equalization goes. We didn't treat these any higher or lower than we did the others. We just asked that you uphold our value uh, considering the evidence that you have in front of you, in front of you at 16,507,252. Consistency is vital. And it's the same number on all of our pages. You sure? Absolutely. <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay, we've got a, any any discussion? No. Joe's made a motion then that we uh, approve the uh, county's assessment on this uh, due to the fact that we don't have correct information from our side. I second that. Motion made and second. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Motion carried then at that point. I'd like to hear it. I'm glad you got up this morning and had your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got up this morning and watched the dog and take him over to Audie Saley at the nursing home. <laughs> okay. All right. I got to put my cows in and fix fence. <laughs> Well, DC that uh, that brings us to uh, DCP Midstreet. That was the one that we had a conference call last year, and then he no show on the next conference call. I know. Remember the name Scott Christopher? Yeah, I I don't remember. I had some meeting with him last year. I had about twenty eight board hearings with DCP last year. So. I can tell you bring as soon as you like that and expect us not to catch it. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, waste our time. That's what happens when you've been on a computer a long time focused. And you don't step away, and you're trying to do a what I want to say. The word is uh, blanket process on all. Yeah, we have we have well, we have a hearing on Monday with Tall Oaks, and now that you said that's Major County, I'm sure he probably made this affidavit the same day. He probably did Majors first, and then he went back in and just changed the name on the affidavit for that deal, but didn't change the value. Be my assumption, but. If, if, now, if I go to major, the first thing that I'm going to do when I go there, I'm going to see what the number is and whether it matches that or not. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, we're looking at uh, mid DCP midstream. Uh, everybody's got their affidavit in hand. There wasn't just a reduction in fair market value. From 22.8 to 6.7? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty good value there. They are basically taxed on pipeline. be the same discussion we had last time. They're not uh, reducing their cost <clears throat> what they charge for uh, gathering costs. So you remember the discussion we had last year? Yes, sir. Um, the value that he's put in his affidavit that the his value is 22884530. Yes, I'm showing, and I guess Renee, we may need to take some clarification just to make sure that I'm showing a value of 19884530 on the value that we sent. Could you check that with your sure. Well, and he's got his all lumped together as one amount, and ours is divided out into just Well, but that's not, that's his rendition. That's not our value. Our value is all on this right here. Yeah. Okay, what, what's our value that we've been 19, 880, 4, 530, but I just want to double check with her to make sure. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. So we have another one of those oops. He has another one of those oops, yes, but my number's right again. I had to uh, check. Sorry. I was getting a little bit nervous, Bob, for a second that maybe I had a wrong number fast enough. <laughs> but no, we had a, a, a value of 19 million. <laughs> 884 530. So he's going to be pleasantly surprised. We gave him a three. We're going to recommend that the board <laughs> set the value at that. Now, a couple of things that I want to mention is this is still in court from last year. We are trying to work on some settlement negotiations. They went out. We have a 15 cases with seven counties, 16 cases with 23 counties, and now this is the 17. So getting closer. We went to Beaver County and we used to settle an agreement there for the 15 case and withdrew the Stevens value case. So I actually did meet with them this year with DCP representatives and they are willing to talk. They just completely got rid of their tax group two years ago with Scott Crystal was new. So then we had no communications really with them uh, with that and we had some good conversations. We had some pipe issues. Uh, that the value went up a little bit last year in 2000. In 2015, our value was about 16 million, but we had found some property that they'd left off of there, so we added it this year because they reactivated it. So that's the difference in the valuation. But I will say that he did come up last year's value. He wanted 4 million 2.99.953, so he's come up too to 6.7 million. We want to thank him for that. So, <clears throat> well, wasn't this the company that argued that the, uh, the downturn in the economy should decrease the value right. of their pipeline? And then our position was that they had never decreased the transportation costs that they were charging. They actually the they rate. actually increased a lot of contracts throughout Oklahoma as you change from yeah. a percent of proceeds to a fixed fee rate. And I believe that some of the contracts that I've seen on fixed fee that's trying to charge a dollar ten. So, uh, but that took out all of the you know percent of proceeds contracts where they had lost fuel clauses uh, and right. as well, and it was tied to an index. And depending on how much ethane that you recovered, 
so, but, you know, they did not have an impairment, you know, we talked about an impairment study last year, they wrote down 302 million, which they told their shareholders they lost 3.2% of value last year. Yet they told the board last year that according to their numbers it was 73% in value. So anyway, uh, I still believe, again, I would just fall back on that we valued these the same way that we valued the other companies and the other pipelines throughout the county. Sim gas, uh, we valued them all the same. Your target, we valued them all the same. They're not here. Uh, One Oak, uh, all of the other companies. So, uh, you know, the ones we really heard from uh, has been uh, this tall oaks uh, from the other value system. So we've just asked that you uphold the value of 19, or reduce the value of 19, 84, 530. Okay, where did they come up with the 22? Is that their number, or did they generate that from us? They said it was ordered as an informal decision that said the stadium was 22,884. Do you have your 975? Yes, I've got everything. Oh, we need to total those yeah, up. Yeah, minor. Oh, it it may be. It might be major county. I'm now. wondering if it's off of... Hang on a second, I'll have these up. <clears throat> Comes up to 22,884,530. So let me double check here off of my sheet. Let's see which one's out. Which, what's it may have been we made a revision and you may have just missed it on one of the uh, deals. So what school district is this? J4. I'm showing. 5862, there's 3 million there. All 5862, you had 8862. Okay. So there's 3 million, there's the difference right there. Exactly. That was Renetta's error. I just want to point that out that I did nothing. Let me check. It's actually her type. You just got dropped in the green. The, I know. the 8 no, is right the above the 5 it. on the, the bus. Just ran over. That's okay. That, yeah, the, the five, the eight is right above the five, and she, I watched her click, and she's got a pretty good ten key. I think go that fast. That's what I do. It should be nineteen eight eighty four. Okay, for the board. We're just letting you go below because the two is below the five. Yeah, <laughs> she went the right way. Yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. in all fairness. To the yeah. Yeah. So the nineteen eight eighty four five thirty is correct. Yes. Okay. See, so they had 22,884. It's just on that one. It's just exactly three million dollar difference. Okay. okay. Then, do I uh, hear, hear any more discussion? Then, do I hear a motion to reduce this to 19,884.53? So we I make a motion and we correct that math error. And made second. Made by Renita Benson. That's B E N S O N. Okay. Yeah. And we didn't Second. catch it whenever yeah. we double checked either. <laughs> you you, you made it. Right. Right. It's all right. Second. And he seconded it. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. And everybody raise your hand. Just everybody will say. That's exactly the bottom. <laughs> no problem. That was an easy one. Well, I, like, I like Ben's comment. At least she erred in the proper direction of the county and not did it too. Uh, no one can say we didn't make the judgment. That's right. There you go. Good. Made one. All right. Well, well, there there you go. Next one then would be uh, we need another thing to sign. Uh, now, Williams is not. They're not here. We just put them on just in case. That we no, it's heard. settled down. We only had some issues about 31 different meters. Okay. And we got a listing of meters from them and we've corrected that. Okay. All right, then, uh, do we need to recess because we may still have something later on coming up? Yes. Okay, then we'll hear a motion then to recess. For uh, I'll make that motion. Second. Just made second. All in favor of the